Hi guys, I hope you're good. The Canal and River Trust manage over 2,000 miles of inland waterway. There are around 35,000 boats on their waterways in England and Wales. The boating community is diverse with people coming from all walks of life and people are often attracted to the lifestyle because of its slower pace and to escape from the stresses of normal life. But what happens when things go wrong or if people need some extra support? Today I've come to meet Albert who is a waterways chaplain and I'm going to talk to him a little bit about what a chaplain is and what they do and how they help the boating community. Yeah, good morning. I'm Albert Bottel and I'm a waterways chaplain. Um, we're here for the support and care of the, of the people on the towpath. Mainly, of course, is uh, we deal with the boating fraternity, and uh, but anybody along who works along the towpath and, and lives along there, we're, we're there for them as well. Well, the chaplain is just like uh, we're sort of well, I'm a lay person in the church, but it, you don't have to be lay, you can be a minister. Um, and we're just there for the, as I say, the care and support of people, and what we do is to engage with the people in the community if uh, and we're there maybe we might just be there for a listening ear or maybe do some practical things like helping to fill in forms or on the uh, get onto the website for the universal credit and uh, or adjustment forms for the CRT um, and we liaise actually with the CRT as well on and sometimes we, we help the boaters with the problems they have and um, yeah that's basically what, it, what we do. And what's your connection with the canals? Why did you choose to become a waterways chaplain specifically? Uh, well, actually, I, uh, I'm a street pastor and also a rail pastor, which means we, we're on the railway stations looking out for the vulnerable people. And also in, in the, the street passes, we're doing that sort of work. And this, I see, is just a progress from, from the streets to the canals, really. And also, I live by the canal here, so... Um, yeah, and I just felt it was something I wanted, was interested in doing. Could you give us an example of some of the ways in which you have helped people? Yeah, so a couple, well, the other year I helped a, a young lady who fell off a boat and she hurt her back and she was off, she was bedridden for a couple of months and then she couldn't get fine work after that and she couldn't move a boat and, and so on. And uh, of course she, the, the CRT wanted to um, put an enforcement notice on the boat. They referred her to us and I helped her to uh, get medical uh, assistance, um, get to a, a, a surgery and so she was able to uh, get treatment from them. She'd already been in hospital at some time but um, she got treatment then I helped her with an adjustment form and uh, gradually she got back onto her feet. She, it was a little bit of, uh, of um, practical help, but also giving her confidence in herself. So this is what she needed to get back into life again, you know, after being off for some time. So that, and that was quite good, and uh, she thanked us for that. And, um, I haven't heard from her since, and so I presume she's okay. <laughs> One of the difficulties we do find, especially with the boating uh, fraternity, is the trying to get her into a the medical practice and uh, get um, treatment. Well, we've got some cards which we we give out, which says to them that they're able to go to any surgery and, and, and get treatment. Um, and uh, some people have done that. The, the lady I talked about earlier, she did that. And um, and it's like that. That really helps the boaters to get treatment for whatever. Um, and especially in this, this COVID time, I've had one or two boaters come to me already to say, oh, I want, think I ought to get the jab and the vaccine. And then um, I said, well, you know, you go down to the local uh, surgery and uh, sign on there and take it from there, like, you know. Waterways Chaplaincy is a Christian organisation. It is, yes, yes. We're from a Christian church, yeah. And do you need to be a Christian to access help from the chaplains? No, you don't have to be a Christian. We, we deal with anybody, anybody with any faith or, or none at all. You know, we, we're, we're impartial in that way. We, we're non-judgmental, of course, so, you know. 
so you're not like all priests oh, trying no, to convert no, that's people. Right, no, right, right, you're right. Yeah. Well, conversion is probably, well, we try to share the gospel if, the, if people want to, you know, we're, we're, yeah, but we're, that's not our main thrust. And are you employed or is it voluntary? For me it's voluntary, yeah. There are some people employed, but with the, with the charity, because we are a charity. Um, but most of the, the chaplains are all volunteers. And is it just boaters that you help, or is it other people, for example, waterside businesses or people that live close to yeah, the water? Yeah, no, any, anybody. We, if we, especially where I am here, uh, we have uh, waterside businesses like the, the, the cafes and the, the restaurants, and, and so I make contact with the people. Um, and if they want help at all, we can we can assist there. Or if we find some homeless people along the, the canal, we'll try and help them. Uh, we'll get them into accommodation or get them into with agencies that will help them. Uh, how many chaplains are there all together? I think uh, last count was about a hundred and we're, we're trying to get 200 but <laughs> we've been restricted with the Covid for recruiting but um, yeah. And if somebody was interested in becoming a chaplain how would they go about that? Well the they could go to our website and we have all the information there and then they'll apply for application form. And to get training if you were oh, to Oh yeah, do we do training. We have training days and then we have lock training, um, which we have to do. And um, there's an ongoing training, if you like. We have safeguarding training and stuff like that. The general normal things that most uh, companies do and organisations do, yeah. Yeah, and you were saying that you have regular meetings with Yes, we have regular meetings uh, on Zoom at the moment, but, but, but I'm, I'm actually the London team leader, so we have our London team, there's about five or six of us, um, so we go, at the moment we're having monthly Zoom meetings, and we also have a Zoom meeting with the, the licensing, the CRT themselves, so we can bring up um, any problems which are ongoing that boaters may have and, and so on and try to liaise with them. Yeah, so I guess it's really important for you to keep good relations with uh, partner organisations. Oh yes, 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 definitely, yeah. And if somebody came to you for help and it was something outside of your remit, um, would it be then signposting them on to people that could help? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd first, if I could help them, I would um, take it to my senior chaplain and then if we couldn't resolve it, we'd try to find agencies which could help them. How much of a time commitment is it for you? Well, we're asked to do one mile a, a week on the towpath. But generally, it's more than that. We usually do more than one mile. We, we're probably, I'm probably out about three times a week. And um, so, yeah, it, it just depends on, on what's going on, really. So you touched on COVID. How have things changed since the pandemic started? Um, for me personally, I've, um, at the beginning of the, of the shutdown last year, we thought, oh, what's happening? No one knew what was happening, but I gradually went out and especially where I am on this canal, along the park. And I was able to keep my distance and still uh, minister to people on, on the boats and, and what have you, yeah. So I, I, I've been out all the time. I've not been restricted. And if somebody needed help, how would they seek that help? Well, there's a, a few ways. Mainly, if they go on the website, they can go into our website and, and ask for some assistance. Sometimes the, it's the CRT themselves who will uh, refer them to us or maybe other boaters will refer us to us. And what would you say to anybody that might be embarrassed or worried about seeking help from the chaplains? Well I think if they... That, mm, it's to pluck up the courage and ask this. <laughs> That's what we're here for, we're here to help. And we're not here to judge or anything else. What would you say is the best or most rewarding thing about being a chaplain? Um, for me, I, I love speaking to people, listening to their stories. Um, and that to me is, is, is really worthwhile for me. It's uh, something I like doing. And it must be very satisfying 
once you see um, an issue being resolved. Yes, it is. It's, it's really good. You know, you, you're, you're, what I'm doing is making a difference in people's lives and, uh, and, and for the good. So uh, that's all really wonderful. Yeah. Um, would you say that there are any challenges or things that make it difficult? Yeah, sometimes when the weather's bad and it's raining or whatever, you might have to go out and see someone. Um, but other than that, um, the challenges are, as they come along, we just face whatever whatever comes along and uh, overcome it, you know. Thank you to Alba. If you do need some more help or you would like to get involved with volunteering or fundraising for the Waterways Chaplaincy, I will leave a link in the description for you to be able to do that. If you have got any questions that we haven't answered, please also leave those in the comments below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Okay, thank you for watching and I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye.